Hello everyone and welcome to an incredible game from the Under-16 World Youth Championship that happened yesterday. It's from Round 8 and it is uh, Rajat Makar representing France and Bennett Hagner representing Germany. Uh, it's a brilliant game. Uh, we, I know we've we've really been spoiled lately with all these amazing sacrifices and amazing games, but uh, it seems uh, the, the show goes on. Uh, and uh, well, here's another one. So let's check it out. Uh, Rajat has the white pieces and he opens with pawn to c4. So starting off with an English opening uh, knight to f6 we have knight to f3 and now e6 the Agincourt defense to the English but now pawn to g3 and pawn to d5 um, uh, transposing to the king's Indian the Yugoslav variation and now pawn to d4 transposing into the Catalan opening and now bishop to b4 with check so uh, here Rajat waited a bit with the, the advancement of the d pawn uh, so black cannot play bishop to b4 right away but now he did play it and bishop to b4 check is a very very popular option here that allows black to, um, uh, well, sort of equalize very, very early on. So bishop to d2, we have bishop back to e7, and now bishop to g2. We have pawn, uh, sorry, bishop to g2, we have pawn to c6, and now queen to c2. So all very standard stuff, everything been played before. Knight bd7, we have castles, and now knight to e4, putting pressure on the bishop on d2. And white very happily gives up the bishop pair here with knight to c3. Knight captures, knight captures, and now kingside castles. We have rook a to d1, uh, and now uh, there are a couple of games that reach this position. For example, f5 is a known move here, knight to f6 is a known move here, bishop to f6 is a known move here, but here we have rook to b8 by Bennett, uh, and it is now as of move 11 that we have a completely new game. Uh, so, okay, pawn to e4, striking in the center, d captures on e4, knight d captures on e4, and now, only now, pawn to f5, chasing away the knight, knight back to d2, and now pawn to e5. Now, the, the pawn was very weak on e6, but now that it's on e5, you can trade in the center, or you can advance at the e4, it becomes very strong. So, pawn to d5, and now pawn to e4. Now, this is um, a double-edged idea, uh, w whenever you see something like this, yes, you do uh, gain more space you gain control of d3 and f3 but you lose control uh, over the squares that the pawn controlled uh, when it was on e5 and th those are the d4 and f4 squares so now this gives white an idea let's uh, remaneuver our knight to d4 where it will be very strong it will have access to e6 and so on so queen to e8 and now rook f to e1 nicely aligning the rook with the queen here so queen to g6 and now knight to d4 now the knight is eyeing that e6 square so knight to e5 so the best Bishop defends it, and now we have pawn to f4, chasing away the knight, and the knight gets a very nice square here uh, on the, the uh, on d3. If you go captures al passan, then just rook captures on e5, and the bishop is also undefended. White would just win uh, on material here, so you have to play knight to d3, which is what, of course, black wanted. And now uh, you could try moving the rook, but it, it doesn't really end well leaving the knight here. This knight on d3 is now more powerful than the rook. This is not make no mistake. This is a monster knight. So, of course, Rajat uh, uh, eliminates it and sacrifices the exchange. Rook captures on d3, e captures, queen captures, and now bishop to c5. Uh, pinning the knight as the king is on g1, king to h1, and now rook to e8, offering a rook trade, which, um, uh, of course, is accepted, captures, captures, and now uh, you don't want to allow queen to e1 check, so knight to c2, now the knight guards the e1 square, bishop to d7, and now we have pawn to b4, uh, starting the advancement, uh, very often the strongest move uh, in any position, we have bishop to f8, uh, and now pawn to c5, advancing the pawn, and now preparing pawn to d6 to create a, a very strong passed pawn. So pawn to a5, attacking the base of the pawn chain, and now pawn to a3, making this the base of the pawn chain. A captures, a captures, and now the position is a most delicate one, and you should play c captures uh, on d5. For example, c captures. Now you don't want to play queen captures. You could play queen captures with check, but it's not all that impressive. After the king moves, the queen just takes away the d5 square from the knight, and the knight really belongs there. And if you play this, uh, then you will uh, still, you can still move the king but the bishop will come to c6 to counter white strong lights square bishop uh we often say when we analyze games that start off as a catalan uh, the the catalan bishop is usually the strongest piece on the board oftentimes even stronger than the queen but here you have nice control over c6 and b5 and this is how you should play it however
over. After A captures on B4, uh, B6 was played by Bennett, and uh, now he just allows this pawn to B5 move that uh, uh, allows White to create a very, very strong pass pawn. So C captures on D5 was played, but now pawn to C6, the advancement that would not be possible uh, in the line that we've shown, bishop to E6, and now comes knight to D4. Uh, you could also just capture on D5 right away, but he has a different idea. Knight to D4, uh, bishop to f7, and now we have bishop captures on d5. Now you don't have to trade, now you can play rook to d8, as it was played in the game. Knight captures on f5, and now bishop captures on d5 with check. Knight captures on d5, and now bishop to c5, uh, and this is where the magic happens. There are two ways you could play this um, uh, and still emerge victorious. Uh, one is pawn to c7, which I'm sure some of you would uh, uh, go for, uh, and then maybe improve the position of your king, you know, slow play the position. But no, uh, Rajat had a different idea. He played knight to h6 with check. And now, uh, what's the what's the reason for this move? Can you just uh, capture the knight? Well, not really. Capture the knight to f6 check, forks the king and the queen, and once you move the king, and now comes knight captures an e8, and yes, you can also capture uh, the white queen, but now pawn to c7 and as you have a dark square bishop and the rook cannot go to c uh to, to d8 to cover the c8 square white will just bring a queen into the game on the next move so that's the problem after knight to h6 with accepting the knight so king to h8 was played and now comes the real shocker uh, of the position feel free to pause the video and win the game for rajat uh, while i give you a couple of seconds there is only one winning move here and it's a most spectacular one So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on always finding new excellent ways to sacrifice your queen. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is knight to f6. And now look at this position. I mean, really soak it in. Uh, what What is happening here? Is, is, is such a thing even possible? The, can, can we just capture the queen? Or even better, can we move our queen? Let's say queen e1 check, let's say king g2, and now take the queen. Well, no, because now knight to f7 is checkmate. The knight covers the g8 square, and this knight delivers checkmate. So that's why that will not be happening. Another thing, after this king to h8 move and knight to f6, uh, okay, we can't move the queen, but can we at least trade queens and uh, give up our own queen? We're still up uh, the exchange. Not really, because after knight captures, you end up with the same idea uh, of uh, this pawn just being unstoppable. There, there's no way to do it. Uh, if you capture the knight, c7, and again, the rook cannot go back, the, the bishop cannot help out as it's a dark square, bishop c8 is a light square, you cannot go to the c file as the bishop is preventing you, and you, you can give a few checks, but the king easily hides, and that's it. You, you play c8 and win the game uh so after this knight captures an e8 move uh well uh, basically the game could have been resigned on knight to f6 but uh, they continue a few more moves rook to c3 was played uh and now uh just pawn to c7 the bishop now has to move uh, in order for the rook to defend the queening square so bishop to a3 but now the the other knight comes into the game knight f7 check king to g8 and now knight to e5 the real idea of course is that if the king goes um, uh, near the knight you will just block the rook with knight to c6 and you will advance the pawn to c8 promoting it to a queen so after knight e5 bishop to d6 was played and now knight captures on d6 uh, you have to give up the bishop in order to uh, win that pawn rook captures on c7 and now knight e to c4 and he was in this position on move 42 that bennett hagna resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here so truly an incredible game uh, uh only 42 moves but uh, what what an amazing queen sacrifice like i said we we are uh, spoiled for choice when when choosing games to cover with so many uh so many queens being offered lately uh but yeah for those of you who are maybe new to chess and don't feel that this is maybe enough to uh, win the game or maybe black could play on there's nothing for black to try here point is that once you you, you cannot capture the knights the knights are defending each other so the rook is I mean, useless here. You can't even go after the pawn as the, the knight defends the pawn. So you could get the king into the game, but now you're just going to start capturing. Knight captures on b6, and now, okay, you can give a few checks. Knight c1 check, king g2, rook to b1, attack the pawn, uh, but the knight just moves. And now you have this uh, square is defended, this square is defended. You can push it all the way to b7. Let's say king goes here, you push the pawn all the way to b7, and that's pretty much it. Now the king and rook are stuck here guarding the, the pawn and knights, and the white king will just 
just you know uh, march up the board start advancing the pawns and win the game or even if you black starts uh, to, uh, preventing that for example with something like uh, g6 uh, uh, and h6 now you will go after the pawn you will give up the b7 pawn and after some trades happen here you will pick up this pawn as well and now you have three pawns and two knights for a rook uh, that of course e even your uncle could easily win this <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, let's check out this uh, move one more time after King to H8, Knight to F6. What what a spectacular move! Uh, I, the reason I didn't use this on the thumbnail, rather I used the hypothetical position that did not happen on the board, is because I would ruin the pause the video moment. So hopefully you guys uh, can understand that. Uh, but yeah, once again, really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to wish a very happy birthday to Luke. Happy belated birthday as his birthday was two days ago. And I would like to thank uh, Ahmed Al Halabi, uh, David Gasparian, Sashidar Pita Purapu, and the Desert Sand Software for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. And I would also like to uh, wish a happy first uh, wedding anniversary to Aaron Matthew. I uh, hope it was a good one uh, and that it continues to be so. And as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching. And I will see you soon, continuing uh, to check up on your wonderful suggestions such as this one and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.